Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And it's time to start adding stuff to our Proxmox server that we just put together. So let's get started. Now today we're going to be building ourselves some way of storing data, which is a Samba server. Now we're going to need this for a lot of other projects down the road, like say Jellyfin server, Plex server, Dockers, whatever it is, we're going to need some form of way just to store all the data somewhere through the network. So that's why we're going to be building this Samba server. Now, if you haven't watched the first video, I'm going to leave a link on the top left. It's just a quick start guide to getting Proxmox installed, like no PVE subscription, setting up your drives, building a template out and a few other things like I OMMU and stuff. So check that out if you haven't seen that yet. And again, I'll leave a link on the top left. And since I put this mini PC server together with limited resources, I'm going to start building out my server. So I'm going to be building a series of episodes just for Proxmox and building out uh, services like, uh, like I said earlier, Plex, Jellyfin, uh, the R services, WireGuard, stuff like that, all onto this mini server that I'm playing around with. All right, so just to recap, the device I'm using is called the Zima Blade. I actually have two two terabyte storage attached to it and a PCIe card with NVMe. Uh, the server is actually installed onto the EMMC, which I don't recommend, but is offloaded to the NVMe for a container or VM storage. And then again, I have two two terabyte hard drives on there for a NAS storage. Now jumping into the desktop, you can see this is my Proxmox interface and I am still on 8.0. I'm not on 8.1 and I know it came out already. I'll update that later. Again, it could probably be a video for that. But what we need to do is set up a storage pool. So what I'm gonna do is head over to my PVE test and in here, what I'm gonna do is head over to disk, make sure I have all the disk here. And you can enable, uh, initiate the GPT if you want, but at this point, we're just gonna create a ZFS pool. Now, I am gonna go to create ZFS. And from here, you could actually choose the hard drives that you want. And what I'm gonna be using is a mirror RAID. Um, this way, I actually have some sort of redundancy along with ZFS redundancy. So I could do snapshots and everything. There's a whole laundry list of what you can do with ZFS. And that's why a lot of operating systems like uh, FreeNAS shifted over to ZFS. Now I'm not going to get into too much of the detail with that because I feel that uh, Proxmox is still a little immature to ZFS because they don't have any GUI in place to play around with snapshots, uh, automatic snapshots and stuff like that. But there are a lot of scripts available for Proxmox just for automating um, ZFS uh, snapshot pools and everything. So I'm gonna name this ZPool because it makes sense, it's ZFS and it's a pool. And I'm gonna hit create. Now this will actually give me only two terabytes of space because again, it's a mirrored system. So if one hard drive does fail, it still has a second hard drive as a redundancy. And as you can see, it is online and I am able to use it. And from data center, I'm just gonna double check. I could go over to storage and I should see a ZPool. There you go. And I could do disk images and container. Uh, if I edit this, those are the only two things that I could add onto this. I can't add like other stuff like ISOs and stuff, but it's fine. I'm just gonna leave for disk images and containers because those are the things I'm really actually just using. Now, because we are very limited in resources and the system that we're using only has eight gigs of RAM, we have to be very diligent on how we build the VMs and what we're gonna use. Because I could technically just build a full VM and have it run Samba service, but that's gonna waste a lot of resources that we don't need to use. So instead, what I like about Proxmox is that we have the ability to create something called container templates, which shares resources with the host machine, but the container itself is very small and doesn't use much resources, which is something we need at this point because we uh, limited resources again. So what we're gonna do now is download a container image. Now I'm gonna go over to my NVMe you see there's a button called CT templates. And if you don't have that, you just need to enable it in your storage area. So I could go over to data center and you could see over here, edit and just add the options what you need like container templates. So I'm gonna head back over to NVMe, CT templates, and I am gonna download the Debian 12 standard. I already did this just in case, but templates, and you could choose the operating system that you want. So if you don't wanna use Debian base, you can use Arch Linux, you can use um, Alpine, you could use Rocky Linux if you wanted to go smaller. So there are other options that you can use other than Debian, but I'm just more familiar with Debian, so I like to use it. And again, it's not a lot of storage that it takes up. And now that we got our templates uh, downloaded, we're gonna get to create CT on the top right, and we're gonna start naming this. So because I know it's gonna be a NAS, I'm gonna be calling it uh, Deb, 
NAS. We're going to create a password for this. And we're going to hit next. Now from here, we're going to choose the template and it's in my NVMe. And I'm going to choose the Debian 12. I'm going to hit next. The disk is, got, is a fun one, okay? So I'm going to show you this in a little bit why it's fun. Anyway, I'm going to choose Zpool right now and I'm going to throw in 60 gigs. Again, you know 60 gigs is not enough for a storage, but I wanted to show you something cool. Uh, now I'm going to hit next. For CPU usage, you could use just leave it as one. Um, it all depends on how much data transfer you're going to be doing in the future. If you have a lot of stuff you're downloading, then you're transferring from here, then you're pulling resources from there. The more um, usage it's going to be, the more CPU you're going to need. So in our case, I'm just going to leave it as one, but you can always change it down the road. So one is fine. As far as memory goes, I'm going to give it one gig of RAM. And that's plenty for now. Again, this all depends on how much usage you're going to get out of this. You might need 1.5 gig, 2 gigs of RAM whatever down the road. But since I am on eight gigs, I got to use this very diligently. So I'm just going to give it one gig. Technically 512 would work. Now in the network area, uh, what I need to do is DHCP. Now, since I have my firewall managing all my static IPs, I'm going to use DHCP and allow my firewall to set all the IPs that I want. If you don't have something like that, and we'll do that for you, you might want to change it to static and give it an IP so it doesn't change on reboot. Now IPv6 I'm going to avoid, so I'm just going to leave it as static and I'm going to leave this as none so I don't get an IPv6 uh, IP address. So next I'm going to hit DNS, I can leave that as well. And then confirm and I am ready to go. Give this a few minutes, maybe less than that, a couple of seconds. It's going to extract the archive and really, it's really quick to create a CT. And there we have it, task is okay, maybe 30 seconds. So from here I could go over here to the CT, you could check out all your stats that you want and I am going to start this and head over to console. Now this is where all the fun start, starts to begin. You have to install all the applications. This is a, like a fresh, fresh install of Debian. So it's got nothing in there. Now to log in, we're going to use root and the password that we made. And to show you, um, we are only using 302 megabytes of storage. And if I go to top, we are only using 19 megabytes of RAM. It's so small running CTs like this. Okay, so first what we need to do is actually install a few applications. So we're going to do app install sudo and curl. Again, I'm not going to install anything that I don't need, so I'm going to keep it as minimal as possible. I'm going to hit yes on that, let that install. And now uh, we have to start creating a user. So from here we're going to do add user and I'm going to name it Don. You know, set the password for this. I'm just going to hit enter for all this other stuff. Yes, that is all correct. And now we're going to add the user to the super user group so we could use sudo. So we're going to do um, user mod a g, a capital G, um, sudo, and done. This way it will give me permissions to use sudo. And then now I could exit out of this and log back in as done. Now to test that that worked, we just have to do sudo app update put in our password and there you go. If this works, then sudo is passed through and you're in that user group. All right, now that that is all set up, the next thing we need to do is actually install Docker. Uh, I'm gonna run this through a Docker interface instead of just running Samba straight through here. This way down the road, if I need to adjust something or add more to this, I can. So I'm gonna, or easily, much easier to do. So I'm gonna do curl s S L so it's lowercase capital capital HTTPS get docker.com and pipe that into sh or shell now give this about a couple of minutes it's going to download everything you need uh, look at that apt transport ca certificates curl even though we installed it already um, it's going to download everything you need to get docker docker compose and docker ce all this stuff working on this install Okay, now that is all done, we could start using Docker right away. So, so the next thing what we really need to do is add our username to the Docker group. So same as like what we did with sudo, we gotta do sudo user mod dash A capital G Docker done. This way I'm added to that group. Now, because we're just doing a Samba, this part is optional. Um, whether you want to share or bind the containers folder to your root folder. This way you have access in both ways. 
or if you skip this step, it will actually store all your data inside that container. I normally like to make a folder for this just in case if my Docker doesn't start up, I still have access to the data. So what I'm gonna do is sudo make dir, and I'm gonna call this directory share. And I'm gonna have to give it permission. So chmod seven, well, sudo chmod seven 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 slash share. All right. And then now we could go ahead and build the Docker. Now the Docker we're gonna be using is called Dperson Samba. And I've reviewed this before on a previous video, which I'll leave a link on the top left. And I've done this whole build using Pi hosted series, and we did everything with Docker's and everything. So this is on um, not new to the channel itself and it's very easy to use and again this has all the options to what you need to know especially this part where you have to give the folder permissions to be browsable read only guest all this stuff needs to be done so i'm going to go through this options and build the samba through here now what we're going to do is sudo docker run so we're going to set it up so every time when you reboot the machine or you need to do something it will restart the service. So we're gonna do restart unless stopped. This way it will tell you, unless you personally stop this, it will keep running forever. Uh, and if it's something failed, it'll try to keep rebooting it. We're gonna name this Samba, so it's easy. And we're gonna need port 139, forward to port 139, and that's normal for NetBIOS. And port 445, and that's normal for Samba uh, port. And then we're gonna change that, we're gonna add a volume and it's gonna be share, which is the folder we created to share inside uh, the container. Now we're gonna create a user just in case. We don't really need it right now because I'm gonna make it so it's guest uh, viewable, but we're gonna name it Don and I'm gonna put a password for password. Again, change that password. Don't use what I use because that's gonna be your password. But in my case, I'm just showing you as a demo and then the share that we're gonna do is called, uh, we'll call it public, public. And we're gonna put a semicolon and that's not a colon, it's a semicolon. Uh, we're gonna use share folder, which is the same as what we built over there with the volume. And here we're gonna say yes, no, and then yes. And the reason why I say yes, no, yes, is because if you head back into here and go over here, the first couple of options would be browsable, yes. Read only, no. And then guess, yes. So I'm allowing guests to read it. It's also browsable, but it's not read only. So that's why I have these options set here. Close that quote. And then now we can make it, it's this daemon and DP person Samba. Now we're gonna load that image. Whoops, I must have forgot something. Oh, you know what? I gotta load this first. D, D person, D person samba and then get rid of the ones at the end this has to be after the fact and there you go okay so what we need to do now is just docker ps just to make sure it's running oops sudo docker ps and there you go the ports are running everything's running let me run it again just to make sure health it started and we should be able to locate this so i'm going to do ip a well ip space a and the IP for this is 104. So what I'm gonna do is pull up my folder, go to network and SMB. And I could let it search for it, but what I'm gonna do is just 192.168.105.104. And there we have it. This is our public folder. And then if I go into it, you could see it's only got 59.2 gigs, which is our 60 gig partition. Just to make sure everything works, we're gonna create a folder. Hit okay. There you go, permissions work, we can create folders. Uh, we are good to go over here. So that's how we get our storage up through Samba. We have a little tiny uh, server. If I go over to summary, you could see it's almost running next to nothing, like 80 megs out of the one gig of RAM that we gave it. And the boot size is only using 800 megs after all the Docker install and everything that we got. What's cool about this now is that if I head over to resources, you see how it says 60 gigs? If I go to volume action, go to resize, and say I wanted to give it another 10 gigs, resize disk, all right, it does it on the fly. I'm gonna close out of this, go back into public, and reload this, F5. 
and all of a sudden you see 69.2 gigs so automatically it does this on the fly without rebooting the docker without rebooting the server and this works actually for vms too so one of the things I love about Proxmox is that I have the ability to resize it on the fly like this. So if you need more storage and 69 gigs is not enough, hey, you could just go in, view action, resize, and add another 100 gigs. I'm gonna resize that again, hit okay, go there, refresh, now I got 169 gigs. And that's all I need just to keep increasing the size if I run out of storage. Anyway, that is it for creating our Samba. Again, we need this as an essential part of creating all our other things down the road, like uh, file sharing, uh, Plex server, and all this other stuff. Now, keep in mind, this is all what you would equivalently call all your eggs in one basket, which is not the best way to set it up. If you are gonna start doing your home lab, I would definitely advise to set up your Samba somewhere else, uh, set up VM somewhere else. Like This way you have uh, some point of failure where if something does fail, not everything fails, you know? So I'm just using this more of a demo base for when you guys start working on your own little servers and you start building it out. You're gonna see by the end of this series, we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna need to upgrade RAM or upgrade uh, storage because we're gonna run out really quick. And that's the fun part. That, that way you know, instead of buying the best computer in the world, at least you know what resources you need. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. And also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.